welcome back to another episode of the Horror Heathen YouTube channel in the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Today, I have a very talented actor, a very special guest, who you all know as the Black Bride in the Insidious franchise, Mr. Tom Fitzpatrick, who Hello. plays Parker Crane, Black Bride in Insidious Films. Um, welcome to the show, sir. This is a great honor for me. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm pleased to be here. I'm honored to be asked. I'm honored and flattered. Thank you very much. So we all know what the Insidious films are about, and we all know what they have to do with the Lamberts and all that stuff, but your character plays a very significant role in the franchise. Yeah. Um, also known as the Black Bride, is the secondary antagonist in the movies. Um, he's a man who in life becomes a serial killer after suffering several years of psychological abuse at the hands of his mother. And later became a parasitic ghost. I hate the word parasite. It just seems like it's like a bad word for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of yeah. But, well, uh, he uh, in the picture. God, I have I have a copy of uh, Insidious Two script here, and isn't he alive in part of the picture, or or is he already dead and he's going around as the Black Bride as a ghost? Isn't that awful? I played the character and I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, inquiring minds want to know. Well, I'm going to read the script when we when we uh, sign up. When I uh, auditioned for it, I didn't know the franchise at all, and uh, I went in and uh, I read. There was a beautiful speech that they had given Parker. Uh, he was in an elevator with a lady. I got that much from the script. I didn't, you know, I didn't get a full script. I got pages to read from. He was in an elevator with a lady. And he apologized to her. Uh, she said, "She said, I'm so sorry about my son. He's curious. He's young. He, I, I warned him not to bother the patients, but he shouldn't have done that." And I say, "Oh, that's okay. Uh, it, I wish I was a boy like that, <laughs> something like that." And then I said something like, "I wish I had a, I wish I had a room like he does, with all of those finger paintings on the wall." And Lorraine just like does a take. What the yeah, what the fuck? And she would say, how, what the hell? How's this, how's this guy know about my kid's bedroom? It was a marvelous scene. And I guess I read pretty well. I got the part. But then I got to, uh, to set that day. It was the second day I worked. And uh, we shot in this great old hospital, a deserted hospital here. It was called, I think it's called Loma Vista or Loma Vista. The Loma Vista or Loma Linda Hospital from like the 20s, the 30s and the 40s. It's been deserted for years because there were always uh, stories of people being killed there and incinerated in the basement. It was the spookiest place I've ever been in. I wouldn't go any place without somebody with me. It was really scary. But anyway, that's where our set was. And they built an elevator. Uh, Thing, just a thing with doors. And then we were going to shoot out of the door and go into the lobby. They used the lobby in the old uh, hospital, all dressed. And you'd never know that it was like this ramshackle and frightening as it was. It was a gorgeous lobby. And so I'm in the elevator. You know, I'm all set to go. And, and I, I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to get to do my speech. This is fabulous. And of course, I have learned it. And I said, you know what? We're not going to use that speech. <laughs> and I'm like, what? You know, they just wanted him to stand there and be spooky. So I can do spooky. So I stood there with Lorraine while she did the apology speech to me. And I'm just like there. And then I kind of like waft out into the lobby and I'm gone. And it's ever so much more effective than that speech. But boy, I wanted to do that speech. But that was the most I learned about the character. The first night I worked, they dressed me up in the drag the first time and they did a whole bunch of uh, shots, just, you know, pictures of her. And then I had to lie down on my floor, on the floor, on my tummy. And the camera's right down tummy level on the floor with me. And I had to grab two bars on either side of the camera and pretend that I was strangling somebody because it was so, t so it was like, just like my st I'm st strangling somebody. And apparently in the other room with another camera was Patrick Wilson going, bah, 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 <laughs> being strangled. But I never got to play with Mr. Wilson. I never got to do the scene with him. So that was my first day. Second day, I'm in the elevator, uh, not doing my speech. 
And then I think they put me in the bed where uh, in the ward where little uh, little Dalton is it Dalton I attack. Yes. I attack the kid, yeah. little Dalton comes by and uh, you know I'm comatose and I sit up and I grab the kid and I scream and uh, I figured that was it because that was all that in the pages they had given me and then like a couple of weeks later this was really cool man they called me up and they said we want to come in and, and do have you come in and we want to do an additional scene so I went to this uh ramshackle ancient old house over in close to downtown this frightening old place and they put me in a room dressed up as parker's bedroom and i just improv putting on the makeup you know putting on the makeup and all that stuff putting on the lipstick putting on the costume putting on the wig and then picking up that that chromium saw that was all i guess lee must have written that uh, thinking that he needed to explain more what the heck was going on with this person. Um, and that was not directed by James. James only directed the first two days. And he doesn't speak at all. He's like really sweet and very shy and takes care of business, but uh, didn't talk at all. He uh, couldn't do, I think the, the last day I worked, with that scene in the hospital was the last day he was going to work on the picture because he had to go get his shots. He was going to go abroad to shoot. Uh, what was it? Number seven, not fear and loathing. What's that thing with the cars? What do they call that thing? Oh, it's like a franchise. Good night. Oh, uh, you know, anyway, he had to go shoot that thing. So I only saw James en passant for like two hours didn't really get directed by him except sit up and grab the kid and scream. That was my direction. But the second time when they called me in for the new scene, I imagine it was the AD I worked with and he was a wonderful guy. It was such fun to work with him. He was like, he, <laughs> I always wanted to be in silent movies, you know, uh, <laughs> that's really why I live in West Hollywood. I wanted to be where the action was 70, 80, 90 years ago. Uh, I always wanted to be in silent movies. And he uh, talked me through the scene because it was MOS without sound. So all the way through, he's telling me what to do. You know, okay, now put on some makeup. Yeah, that's good. Put the makeup on. Good, good. Now now put the lipstick on. I said, put the lipstick on. Good, 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 good. Okay, now, uh, now put on the bodice of the dress. Okay. He said, okay, now put on the wig and do it this way so we sort of see you come up out of, you know, see the wig like this, and then we want you to go down like this and put the wig on, and then we want to see you come up with the veil and the makeup. And But he talked me through it. It was so fun. I pretended it was like 1922, you know, and I was in a silent movie. Uh, and then I pick up the saw and go threaten that poor little girl tied up in the chair. So that was a fun day. That was my funnest day uh, of all the days on... Uh, on Insidious. You know, I really didn't work much. Uh, I think in, in total with the number two and number three, maybe five days work for the whole thing. But then I had all these these uh, subsidiary gigs. I, uh, I had a, a photo shoot with uh, Dalton where I was just hanging around with the red candle, you know, looking terrifying. That was a day of work. <laughs> and then um, then I did, uh, they made some kind of a, I don't know, virtual reality thing or something with me and Lynn, Miss Shea. She was, she had dialogue. She was, I don't know, I couldn't hear what she was saying, but she had dialogue probably about, you know, her experiences going into the further. And I was just there, of course, with the red candle. Uh, but that was kind of fun. So that was a day's work. And then, the most fun of all the subsidiary things that I did was going to do uh, the premiere of number three at Grauman's Chinese Theater up in Hollywood. Uh, okay. They took me to a room in the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, which was marvelous. Uh, and they made me up and dressed me. And then they took me across the street and deposited me on the red carpet at Grauman's Chinese Theater 
for the premiere of the uh, the picture. Wow, it was so exciting. Uh, and I probably got as many pictures taken of me as all of the stars did, which was really fun. Of course, I was all in the drag. So, uh, And again, it was like, Everybody wanted to hug the damn black bride. I mean, she's a scary thing. And they all want to hug you. They all want to kiss you. And they all want to be photographed with you. It's interesting, the, the hold she has on people. Actually, it's mostly, obviously, it's mostly women. <laughs> Maybe it speaks to women. I don't know. Uh, and then we had an after party at a nightclub down the street from the theater. And they were going to have me appear on the stage. I was going to curtains were going to part and there'd be a big poof of further smoke and a blue spotlight and the black bride was going to appear and they were going to be playing um cherry glazers uh recording of tiptoe through the tulips which is scary man she takes like tiny <laughs> tim's version and goes even <laughs> further with it and i listened they sent it to me to listen to us you guys could I please lip sync with this? Could you keep the spotlight on me and let the black bride lip sync to this thing? Well, I don't know, let's see it. So I did it and I said, oh, that's pretty funny. So <laughs> that was my my favorite moment. Uh, you know, the curtains part and the spotlight comes on, the blue smoke comes up and the black bride comes out and she lip syncs the whole song to tiptoe through the tulips. It was more fun than anything. I loved it. I loved it. I got a big round of applause. <laughs> so that's been my experience with that's my experience with Insidious Part Two and Three. Uh, many days of work from what was going to be only two days of work. Uh, that's I guess if I had a point to my story, it's that. <sighs> that that's amazing. I mean, I'm happy for you, Tom. I really am because yeah, it sounds it like fun. it sounds like um, this character has developed over the years um it's still even popular to this day in my opinion um even after the, they wrapped up the whole franchise i still see stuff on on the internet about the black bride so it's really well, cool you know, to see that I, I was talking to some young friends the other day you know i said oh yeah i played this character the black bride and in insidious and they were not familiar with the franchise so that of course being kids out come the phones and they're looking for me immediately on google or whatever, and they found something called a site called Ode to Parker Crane, which features me and the Black Rider. There were 150,000 hits on the damn thing. Wow. Can, I'm gonna can you believe that? You know, are you looking for it now on your phone? <laughs> no, I'm writing it down so I can mention it in the video or in the yeah, description. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think maybe there's a scrap of me turning up at the uh, the premiere at Grauman's Chinese, uh, and I think they're, they're, they might have used the footage of me getting made up and everything. So that was the kind of the film they put up. But then the comments, my God, 150,000 comments. It, it The character resonates with people. It's wonderful to have, you know, it's marvelous to have played a character that, that's pop, that, that is that popular. Well, you mentioned before the interview, like um, some people are drawn to your character due to, like, you know, the psychological aspects and how yeah, some it. some women, some women may have men and women have may have experienced the same trauma growing up. Well, so yeah. you never know. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's fantastic how they can they find this as a coping mechanism or a way to cope with their trauma in the past. So yeah, yeah, that's that's something to be proud of, man. I mean, shit. I mean, I would be proud yeah. of that. So I I, ser I yeah. serve a purpose. It's, I'm I'm, I'm terribly. <laughs> Proud and happy. And, you know, all props to Lee Wannell, who invented that story. He invented the Lamberts. He invented the Further. And he invented Parker and the Black Bride. God bless him. He's, he's very clever. Wonderful. Wonderful writer. So speaking I'm, trying of to be, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to write screenplays. <laughs> I, I have segued into wanting to be a screenwriter. I'm so old that not many people offer me parts anymore. So I thought, well, I know how to, I've been in, I know, I've read scripts. I know how it goes. Child, it's hard to write a script. Let me tell you, it's like, it's a, it's a form. Screenplays are pretty much a form. They're like haikus. You gotta, you got 
yeah. 105 pages. It can't be longer than 105 pages, most of them. And you have to have the setup here and you have to have, you know, the wrong decision made about here. And then you have to see the person working out their wrong decision and enjoying it. They don't know they've made a wrong decision. And then about page 50, 55, bam, they get hit head on with the truth of how fucking dumb they were. And then uh, they have to deal with that. And it gets worse and worse and worse and worse until about page 85. And then you have to have the resolution. Either they figure out how to save themselves or they go down and die at the end. And it all has to happen in 105 pages. It's a marvelous, marvelous form. And I've started to watch movies now with that in mind. And screenwriters are really skilled, a lot of them. I, you know, boy, oh boy, oh boy. They, 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 it's a great craft. So I'm trying to be one. <laughs> Old I wish the best luck, sir. Because... way over to be a screenwriter. So if you've got the imagination, you get the writing skills. I mean, the sky's the limit. I'm telling you. So yeah, yeah. well, I'm doing. I, I, I can do setups like crazy. The beginning stuff. I'm really good at characters because I've played so many, being an actor, uh, and I know how to write them. And I'm good at dialogue again because I've played so many characters. And I listen to people. I listen to people. You know, when I walk down the street, when I'm on the subway, whenever I am, I always listen to human beings. You know, everybody has different ways of expressing what's inside them and they're all individual and they're like colored by where they are maybe or their background but it's wonderful to listen to people so i'm good at dialogue and i'm good at description but i can't plot for a hill of beans <laughs> i really have trouble making up plots and that's what i admire about guys that write screenplays you know how do they do that <laughs> I have a couple of views, man. So, well, I have one that I'm writing. I did a, uh, it's a short. It's on uh, uh, every Christmas. I think it's going to turn up on Full Moon Productions uh, site, whatever you call it. Um, it's called The Twelve Slays of Christmas, S L A Y S. Okay. And, uh, you know, Three beautiful young ladies are out in a car driving through the countryside. They're on their way to a Christmas party. And don't you know, the damn car breaks down and they have no bars on their cell phones. So they have to go to this big, scary house up on the hill and knock on the door and see if they can borrow the landline. And who owns the house and opens the door? But me, scary old me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they come in and as they say, hilarity ensues. And you think, oh man, that old man is going to kill those girls and it's not going to be pretty. And there's a flip at the end and they turn out to be demons and they rip me apart. Uh, anyway, uh, it was fun to work for Full Moon and they have like about 300 pictures on their site that you can get. They, uh, they're low budget. They're good, but they're, they're low budget. They're based in Cleveland, Ohio, which is wonderful. They work out of an old mansion in Cleveland Heights. And Charlie Band, Charles Band, the producer, was kind and accessible and nice. So I'm writing uh, a Christmas horror movie for him. <laughs> this old guy, he's an old actor, and he's going to come. He, uh, this nice young, the English teacher in this high school gets a grant and she wants her kids to have the experience of putting on a play with a real professional actor. And um, she hires this old actor out from Hollywood in New York to teach him an acting class and uh, direct and mount a production of The Christmas Carol and play Scrooge in it. So he arrives about Halloween uh, and meets the kids. And don't you know, vampire murders start to happen immediately. And who is suspected? Grandpa, of course, the old guy. But <laughs> I have to figure out who is really doing it. Who's really doing it? And I think it's going to be Miss Harrington. She's the kind of bitchy, evil uh, home economics teacher. And she and the English teacher are both 
uh, competing for the guy who teaches shop and uh, ag, Mr. Hoagland. So I have a feeling that the home ec teacher is staging these murders to mess up the English teacher and her projects somehow. somehow. So <laughs> that's my thing. I'm, I'm doping out that script and I'm trying to make it tight and small cast and cheap, which I know will appeal to full moon and scary. And then I'm going to pitch it to them when I when I get it written. <laughs> that's my current that's project. Great. That's, that's it's awesome. Good, it sounds like a good story, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So, um, like, I'm afraid we're running out of time. So, um, it was a quick 30 minutes. <laughs> what? So, oh, you're all done? Okay. That was a fast half no, hour. No, no, no. no I'm, all, I'm not done yet. So, um, I have a friend. Her name is Brenda. And she is a huge, huge, huge fan of the Sinus films, especially your character. So, oh, um, she, I was wondering if you can give her a quick shout out. Her name is Brenda. And she would absolutely love to say, you feel free to say hello to her. Oh, hi, Brenda. I'm honored to meet you. Um, let me go into Black Bride mode. This is how you die, Brenda. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> I think she'll love that. Tom, you've been a fantastic uh, well, I, guest. I, 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 I love you. Thank you, you so, so much, Ben. Uh, well, where is this going to be? If I want to see myself, where will it turn up? Well, when I get done publishing, it's going to show up on you, my YouTube channel. But then I'm going to send you a direct link in your email so you can oh, get, take it straight there. So, yeah. And the audio will be uploaded to my podcast called South Jersey War, which you can find on Spotify, so, I, so, Apple so Tunes, so iTunes, so whatever. No image, or, or we have both the image on, on the thingy and a, a, an audio thing too, just audio? Yes, correct. Oh, cool. Okay, good. Send it to me. I love it when people send me things. I'm old. I can never find any fucking thing on the goddamn internet. <laughs> so, send it to me. Okay, you have a good day, Ben. Thanks so much. This was fun. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful weekend. I will. Thank you. I I wish you the best luck in your career, sir. Thank you very much. Keep looking for me. Thank you. Bye.